Well, one week ago today, the world watches the key bridge collapsed after a cargo ship rammed into it. And now, crews out of Atapsco will try to salvage the largest load yet from up to 4,000 tons of bridge debris. Alexis Tavila is on your corner in Dundalk near the bridge collapse. She's been there all morning long, breaking down the huge task ahead for crews today. Well, the main focus today is for crews to pull out a 350 ton piece of the bridge. And just to put that into perspective, that is two and a half times heavier than the Statue of Liberty if you exclude its base. Now, with that being said, we know this rainstorm is going to have wind and lightning, and those will pose some dangers to the crews that they will have to try to work around in order to move forward with this wreckage removal. Now, there are several cranes crews are using to help clear steel and concrete from the Protapsico River. After they pull out these bridge debris pieces, they are loading them on a barge and sending it to Trade Point Atlantic. There, it will be inspected and then it will be moved to a disposal site. This task of pulling out a 350 ton piece of the bridge will be a tougher fight than this past weekend. Crews over the weekend took 10 hours to pull out a piece of the bridge weighing 200 tons. Governor Westmore called that effort a relatively small lift, given the new task crews have to tackle. Every time someone goes in the water, they are taking a risk. Every time we move a piece of the structure, the situation could become even more dangerous. We have to move fast, but we cannot be careless. Now, Moore says that the divers say that the water is so murky and there's so much debris that the visibility for them is only a foot or two feet. That really just shows you the type of mission that they have on their hands here. But with that being said, the dive crews are not able to go back into the water until that debris is cleared so they can try to find those four missing construction workers. Reporting, I'm Alexis Davila for WJZ. Thank you, Alexis. Well, Maryland lawmakers have fast tracked a bill that would help workers and businesses at the Port of Baltimore and are set to hold a hearing on it today. It's called the Port Act, but there's only one week left in the legislative session, so lawmakers do not have a lot of time to get it passed. The bill would establish temporary relief programs. Funding would come from the state's rainy day fund, which they often use during emergencies. Lawmakers in both chambers are working together to pass this bill. The thing that most people don't think about is the helping hand that you need. It comes from your local and state government in a crisis and an emergency. And the hearing on the bill will be held at 1 p.m. Lawmakers are hoping to have this bill passed by the end of the week. And there's now a memorial near the former west end of the bridge honoring the victims of the collapse. So there are six crosses topped with six hard hats symbolizing the six construction workers. The memorial down Fort Armistead Road also pays homage to the countries each of those victims were born in. Artist and activist Robert Marquez helped start this memorial. He actually drove here all the way from Dallas, Texas to paint a mural there. We want to send a message to the community, especially the, the, uh, the family of uh, the people that are trapped in, in the bridge, that they have people behind them, supporting them. We all family, we all brothers, and uh, this is something that we need to unite, in, uh, especially in this difficult moment. Marquez is taking donations to add more to the memorial, like flowers and candles. A reminder, the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs is also still taking donations. We have more information on our website, WJZ.com, for a link. And stay with WJZ as we continue to bring you the latest developments in the long road to recovery from the historic collapse of our bridge.